So first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Katie O'Brien, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing. And I'm here with a number of residents to talk about creativity and the arts here at the Admiral. Um, first of all, I want to outline the schedule. We'll be in here with a presentation with the panelists for about an hour. I guess when I swing my head, I lose my mic. Um, for about an hour, so we'll be wrapping up here at around three o'clock, and then we have a couple things happening after our panel. We'll be doing an art project in our creative arts room, which is just around the corner. We'll have refreshments right up right here in the foyer, and we'll also be taking small groups up for tours of our a couple of our model apartments that are available now. So, and that is that three to four o'clock hour. We'll be wrapping up. Um, the event, you know, around four o'clock or whatever is comfortable for people. Um, before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Admiral of the Lake. So at the Admiral of the Lake, we have both independent living and the full continuum of care. We have 196 apartments that are life care, uh, lifestyle apartments, and we also have outpatient rehab. In our harbors, we have 39 assisted living apartments, 17 memory support suites, 36 private skilled nursing suites, and Medicare short-term rehab. We have a full presentation on life care, but it really is, the, it really is what differentiates, differentiates us from other retirement communities. We're a not-for-profit, and currently we're around 93% occupied and have a waiting list. What Life Care is, it provides a plan for life. It's financial and logistical security. It's priority access to long-term care, and it's peace of mind. A key piece is, it's predictable and discounted long-term care. And another benefit of Life Care is once you qualify for Life Care, should you run out of money through no fault of your own, you'll still have a home at the Admiral. If you, there's um, a number of resources that are available through the sales team, and we'd be happy to talk with you about life care in more detail. But today, we're here to talk about creativity and the arts at the Admiral, specific to the lifestyle that we enjoy, um, our residents enjoy here, and, and the staff as well. So let's jump into what is creativity here at the Admiral and how do we embrace it? And to get our minds into kind of, just in the mindset, I pulled a quote from Henry Matisse. Creative people are curious, flexible, persistent and independent with a tremendous spirit of adventure and love of play. And I can't think of a better introduction to this group of residents than that right here. And now I'm going to introduce Jan Petrie, who's going to talk a little bit about um, the arts here at the Admiral. Just a moment. I'll let them sit. Sure, please join us. Hello, I'm Jan. Um, the Admiral. Those of us who moved in have benefited from the fact that the old Admiral had a, an extensive art collection. So one of the first jobs of the art committee was placing, uh, vetting that art and placing, replacing all the decorator art with art from the Admiral collection. So that's primarily in our public areas and scattered throughout the floors. Uh, then we then started a program of art exhibits. So we have six exhibits a year. We, you've, you've walked down our hallway gallery. Um, it's one of our, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a major event in, in our program of, of culture. Uh, the artists usually are in attendance and our uh, residents really love meeting the artists. Many of these artists then return for artist talks or workshops. Um, this picture is the artist David Siskel, uh, who's been here many times and is a favorite of the Admiral community. Uh, we also allow residents, unlike some communities, to hang art 
in the hallways outside their unit, uh, within reason, uh, <laughs> near, near their doorways, and some, hall, some particular hallways have even uh, had a theme. For instance, all water pictures or things like that for Anne Arundel Lake. Um, so that's, that's pleasant too, you'll see as you walk around our resident spaces. Um, we participate in the, in the neighborhood art walks. Um, this sculpture was created, move back to the one before, uh, the, uh, uh, Lucy, yeah. The artist Lucy Savinsky created this uh, while we all watched from um, mufflers and walkers and <laughs> other miscellaneous metal parts. And uh, it was a, a really beautiful piece in our garden and lasted throughout the summer, even through a major storm, it, it never moved. Uh, so that was an enjoyable uh, participation on our part. And then we've been for three years also uh, a part of the Edgewater Art Walk. And last year, uh, this was on Earth Day, so we wrapped our trees, as you can see, with recycled t-shirt material as part of the Earth Day project, and really had a colorful presence on Foster Avenue, uh, enjoyed by all of our neighbors also. Um, the program has rounded out with artist talks, artist films. Um, we've even had uh, a walk along the lake to look at the carved sculptures in the rocks. Um, and then our, our actual processing um, takes place in our, our great creative arts studio. So I'm gonna let Judy tell, uh, Jeannie tell you about the creative arts studio. Really, really, uh, real quick before you pass it off, can you tell a little bit about yourself as an artist? Or your enjoyment <laughs> of art yourself? Well, I had a career in advertising. So I came to Chicago to go to the Institute of Design and um, worked in design and then 25 years at Leo Burnett as an art director. Um, later in my, I also am very involved with Intuit, the Center for Intuitive and Outsider Art and headed their exhibition program for 25 years. Um, and uh, late in life became a wood sculptor. So. <laughs> Uh, I really enjoy being at the Admiral. Uh, it's a very creative environment, um, and it's become a community that's very important to me. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. She's modest. <laughs> <laughs> She's a wonderful sculptor, and a uh, and and is I think the glue. The, the the heart of Intuit. Do you want, do any of you know Intuit? The she's kicking me under the table, but it's true. I, um, the Intuit is the Outsider Art Museum in uh, Chicago. Great spot, and Jan is very very central to that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, she's she's led from our hallway shows and our our involvement in art all through the building, really, to the creative arts room, which is just outside this door and across the hall. And you're all invited. Uh, later, you're gonna have treats in the hall and, and visits to apartments, one of which, by the way, is next door to me. And I'd be happy to have people stick their heads into me. <laughs> I'll show you the art that I have up in my room. Um, Anyway, I, I have been involved since I came here eight years ago, give or take. Um, I've been involved in the creative arts room. Um, I just started doing things there, so I started giving workshops. One of the great things about the uh, Admiral is that instead of little groups of people hired from the outside to come in and do activities with the people who live here. We do our own creations and everybody kind of draws on their strengths and their interests. And in my case, I've all my life um, been involved in art in one way or another. And so I just started teaching workshops and I've done all kinds of 
workshops here. I've taught calligraphy, um, uh, uh, 15th century chancery hand. I've taught bookbinding. I've taught um, collage. Calendar making. Ca calendar making. <laughs> yes, I, I did do sort of from their own lives calendar making. Um, Valentine. I mean, all you name it. We've we've done workshops here, and these workshops invite everybody, um, including people from the harbors. Um, if, if somebody is, well, let me put it this way, we, we never expect to find people who are um, art studiers, art majors. Or we we uh, take you at wherever you are and lift you up in the art room. And I, I love uh, teaching classes and I'm going to have a workshop for you. There, there is no failure with the project that I'm doing today. No, no need to feel nervous about what you're doing. Here are little examples of it. I'm going to have you make um, uh, uh, bookmarks. And I have all the equipment, including googly eyes and other sort of fun things down in the, uh, over in the art room. Uh, that I invite you all to take place in. I do mention that we've had many other people come into the building to teach. Um, we had people doing botanic art studio. We've had people doing watercolor, professional watercolor artists who came and did a series of you know, several weeks, six weeks of, of um, watercolor studio work. For people who have never, I was one of them. I'd never done watercolor in my life. Had no idea. And and was filled, the whole room, I think, maybe there was one or two people who picked up a watercolor brush. But basically it was, it was, it wasn't the blind leading the blind, because the teacher knew exactly what he was doing, but none of us <laughs> knew what we were doing, and we had a great time. There's also a wonderful person, a resident here, who's not here right now. He's in the, in Arizona, but when he comes back in a few weeks, he often teaches oil painting, um, color theory classes, and he does it specifically for people who have never, ever tried it before. And we have a number of people who are now regularly using the art studio who had never done art in their lives. Um, there's some great stories of that with Exactly. Well, <laughs> do you think this audience is ready for this? They are. That may be what seals the deal. <laughs> you might not have heard her comment. She said yeah, that she's drawing. Life drawing. I, I was speaking in this room about seven years ago to a gathering of a lot of people and said that I was going to start a a uh, life drawing class. And then it occurred to me that many people in the room wouldn't know what I meant by saying life drawing. So I said, we're going to do a new drawing class. And I, I will uh, hire models and we'll meet in the art room and designate the time. And there was interest in this. <laughs> but one woman came up to me, took my hand, my dear, my dear, she said. I would love to come to your nude drawing class, but I just don't think I'm ready yet to draw in the nude. <laughs> I immediately went to the art room and made a cartoon of, of a, um, a group of people standing. We used easels uh, for this class, and I put easels around the center platform and had people standing at their easels drawing all of them nude. And on the <laughs> dais or the, the table, the model was sitting fully dressed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that sat in the window of the of the art room until somebody I was flattered, somebody stole it about three years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so we 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 do all kinds of uh, drawing. And actually in that class we had a fabulous person who had never done any art in her life other than grammar school, you know, coloring or something, and she, there she was 
And the first day of class, we, to my surprise, I had hired somebody named LaDawn something, and I thought I had a woman model coming. Turned out it was a man. And there was my, my uh, dear friend, Elaine, who at the time was maybe 80, 85, and had never drawn before, and was the head of uh, Catholic schools for the city of Chicago. Her life had been perhaps somewhat sheltered. And the closet door in the, in the art room opened and out walked the lawn in his glory. And um, Elaine sat there and I thought, I wonder how this will go. And she took her charcoal and stood back and just drew away and, and stayed in that life drawing class for two years. Uh, so we, we have a good time in the, in the art room. We also have wine and cheese coloring book parties. <laughs> for those of you who want to just put your toe in, <laughs> in the art room. Uh, do you, if you wouldn't mind just touching base kind of on the polar opposite about some of the um, facets with Gabby. Oh, Perfect. yes, yes, and there's a picture of, of, of that here. There it is. The, the uh, third graders at Gowdy School, which is just a few blocks from here, come and do, I, I teach art classes with them. They, uh, their school has no art program. The, the public schools in Chicago have to choose, at least I, I think most of them, unless they're a magnet school, they have to choose whether they do music or art. And in Gowdy's case, it's a music program. And so they have no painting, no drawing, no art ever. And so we invite them to our art room and they come for uh, three, well, two sessions um, with I get big sheets of paper and, and paint, and they uh, over there, there you see them working right there. And at the end, Jan photographs all of them with with their holding their painting, and then we mount the paintings. And one of our shows in the hallway is of the Gowdy School of Third Graders, and we have them come and stand in front of their paintings when we have an opening. And all the people from the Admiral come down and ask them questions, and they proudly stand in front of their, their pieces and uh, explain them, explain their work. Yes, there's, there's an example right there, the, the one behind, yeah. Yeah, right, there's. Great. Yes, wonderful, yes, yes, yes. wonderful. Very cool. So it's, it's a beautiful partnership with the school. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, so art comes in a lot of different ways. We've been talking about um, creative arts, but it also encompasses music. So now I'll turn it over to Helen, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and how you enjoy creativity in the arts here at the Admiral and a little bit about the music. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give you a little background about myself first. I moved to the Admiral nine years ago from Oak Park where I had lived since 1980 when I moved to Chicago for graduate school at Rush University. And many people look at me and say, what are you doing there? Well, I was 64 when I moved here with my friend Carol, who was a friend for over 40 years and she was 11 years older than me and had just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So I knew I needed a backup plan. I needed a plan for what am I gonna do when I can't, when I'm still working and Carol needs help. So she was with me for four years in our independent living apartment as I continued to work nearby as a nurse practitioner. And then in 2017, I transferred Carol to memory support in the harbors for the last three years of her illness and she died peacefully in the summer of 2020. Both of us felt supported in those difficult years. And I am forever grateful that we transitioned here. And now, I'm soon to be 73, and I'm here for the duration of my life. I find a community of friends in this vertical neighborhood that is just amazing. And there are plenty of opportunities within and outside the animal to stay active, regardless of your age. I love to sing. It's one of my favorite engagements in an art form other than playing with my camera. Singing engages my brain, 
as well as my body and my spirit. After any rehearsal, I feel rejuvenated and full of endorphins as from a workout. But I don't sing alone. I sing with a group. And to hear the multitone created when people gather to sing together, particularly in parts, is just awesome. It makes me feel part of something special to make beautiful vocal music with others. And to hear the harmonic parts that blend into the whole and become a collective voice nourishes my being. Church choirs have always been part of my life. I still commute to my own park parish where I sing in that volunteer choir and have been a member for 19 years this year. But when I moved to the Admiral nine years ago and sat down there and watched an Admiral performance on this stage, I knew I wanted to be part of it. And so I've been a member of the Admiral Chorus for eight years. As you can imagine, these two singing groups have quite different repertoires. <laughs> so our goal is, and I, the reason I love singing, I love singing you both, but the Admiral Chorus exposes me to a different genre of music. Our goal at the Admiral Chorus is to have four events each year for our resident community. A winter and summer sing-along that's more informal with the chorus sitting down there in, uh, below the stage and leading the rest of the community sitting out there in song. But our major work in weekly rehearsals is for two concerts, one in the spring and one in the fall, where the chorus performs on this stage for the Admiral community. These concerts give us a common goal for, for which to hone our collective voices into a chorus. We have a fabulously talented director, Jan Graves, who's been with us for six years. Jan has a theater background, or the arts background, and she's dynamic and energetic. She challenges us with toe-tapping tunes, interesting harmony, fun, or meaningful lyrics. When we rehearse, there can be a lot of repetition because we're honing in on learning parts and rhythms so as to sing with finesse for the performance. But through it all, we're sure to have good laughs while we make music and mistakes together. For the past five of my eight years in chorus, I've been chorus manager and worked closely with Jan, our director. And I have to say that even this administrative role has been an enriching experience and a different form of being involved in the arts. With resident-driven resident activities on the independent living side of the Admiral, my chorus manager role has stretched me and given me satisfaction in sharing not only my singing voice, but my organizational skills. This role also dives me into a deeper commitment and relationship with my Admiral resident community. Just as in singing, it's more enriching to be an active participant rather than just passively listening or receiving. I'm so grateful to the chorus that continues to thrive here. You know, and I know other residents are grateful for the chorus as well. I'll never forget last year's first sing-along when the pandemic finally eased a bit to allow us to gather and sing. The sing-along was a patriotic thing, and even though it was held on August 2nd, well past the 4th of July, the singing that filled this room through masks was exhilarating. The emotion in the singing was not just the fervor in the songs, but for the fact that we could again be together in community and with one voice. Thank you so much, Anna. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. So we've covered fine arts and crafts and um, a little bit of singing. Now we're going to go to the written word. And I would like to introduce Bill, if you'd say a few words about yourself, Bill, and also talk a little bit about your creativity and how you participate in the arts here at the Admiral. Uh, <clears throat> my name is, is Bill Hinchliffe, and I moved here in 2013 after 24 years in a 1928 courtyard apartment building in West Rogers Park. But it took me a while to decide. I have cousins here, Hank and Joan Bliss, who took me here in well, probably, they were early comers. And I said, oh yeah, it's very nice, but no, not for me. No, not for years, maybe a decade, no, no, sorry. <laughs> and then I had a, a health crisis, and I changed my mind. 
and uh, I, the West Roger Park Place no longer looks so terrific. The walk to the third floor, the clanking radiators, the lack of central AC, the washer and dryer in the dank basement, the not great shower, the 1928 kitchen sink and cupboard. Some of you may, they're charming places, but I'm ready to leave. So I came here, and I've been very happy here since the summer of 2013. Um, my fellow residents probably know me best as the guy who takes people on lots of trips and tours, and, uh, and that's, that's fun, that's an important, important thing for me. But uh, I want to talk uh, a little bit about my involvement in the writing projects. I have been the editor of our in-house uh, publication, or magazine if you will, called The Anger for the last two years. Uh, kind of fell into this when the previous editor skipped town, or <laughs> she moved away, I'm sorry. And um, uh, I was happy as a writer of occasional articles, and that was just fine, and then suddenly I'm the, uh, I'm the, okay. I'm the editor, and uh, uh, it was a little hard, very hard at first, but, but I've come to enjoy it. It's been, as I said, two years now. Uh, it's, 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 been, it's been fun, I want to read uh, the, the, next, the next issue is at the printer right now. I won't go into details, but we're hoping for the best. The printer sometimes gets bogged down. But uh, this is from my note uh, from the editor uh, at the beginning of the issue. In my two years of writing, uh, of editing Anchor, I have had the chance to discover an amazing diversity of talents here at the uh, Admiral, uh, to write about them myself, to ask others to do so, and in some cases to get the talents to, to write their own articles. And just to give a few examples, and some of them are in this in this room. Um, Linda Keen was a, a professional, was edited the Wrigley Company magazine for years. She's written for us. Glenn Spikesback is here. He's an aerospace engineer who whose first uh, uh, column uh, called Science Made Simple will uh, will be out when the when the issue comes. Helen Scheider, who talked a few minutes ago. Uh, career as a nurse, uh, but also as a writer, who's written about a variety of things for us, and and really on it on it goes. Uh, Lois Hobart to my left is doing a series on end of life issues. Bindi next to her, Bindi Bitterman is our resident limerick writer or limericist. That's a word. I'm not sure. uh, and 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 there are many others. It's really pretty amazing. Bob Grossman came a few years ago. I found out he's a lawyer. Uh, I found out that he had written an article in the New York Times in the early 90s when they were doing a series called About Men. I said, Bob, the New York Times? And he said, yeah, can you have a copy? Well, I'll, I'll see if I can. It's on my wall, it's, it's sort of framed, but he, he got it down and we, we reprinted it. It's, it's, it's really, it's really very, very nice, very good. I won't go into detail about his mentoring. A young man who knocked down their door in the middle of the night in Hyde Park and one thing led to another and he mentored them for, for some time. It was very, very interesting. Um, and I'm going to end with uh, uh, Jose, another, another resident, Jose DeMauro, uh, a pathologist, retired pathologist, who, who turns out to be a good writer, and wrote an article uh, that I in, in, in an earlier issue in, in a pandemic period uh, about about that, I'm going to just read a quick excerpt from it. But I, I in the memoir, a memoir class with him, and, and I heard this and, and later thought, gee, this would be fun to, to put in the anchor. And that's all other subject I don't think I'm going to talk too much about. We've had a memoir class here for the last three or four years, uh, which has been a lot of fun for, for those of us. 500 word minimum, uh, maximum, uh, you know, you, you, it disciplines you. And, and it, it's been it's been uh, real helpful, I think, for those of us who've taken it. So, another writing possibility at the end. Well, but here's a little bit of Jose De Maro's essay uh, called "Naked." Every day after breakfast, we would put on our masks, see his wife, and go out for a walk along our stretch of Lincoln Park or Lake Michigan itself. On this particular, uh, those daily walks to the park or lakefront were our real moments of freedom. Even if some viral particles were floating around, they could not possibly survive the fresh air and the, and the beauty. We felt safe. So on this particular day, we rushed from our apartment, energized, not wanting to waste any more time inside. We happily greeted neighbors and the personnel of the lobby. They greeted us back. The world was perfect. Through the sliding doors, we went carefree east towards the lake, the sun stroking our faces, it was then that I raised my hand, and a sudden feeling of dread overtook me. I had forgotten my mask. 
My hand covered my mouth with shame as Eve hiding her nude body when expelled from the Garden of Eden. I felt desolate, suddenly ejected from bliss and freedom. The inviting and safe world had turned foreign, hostile, dangerous. I felt naked. <laughs> you get the idea. They, they ended up doing the walk, and he said, you know, some not even was wearing masks. And it was, I felt comfortable until they came back to the end, in which case he quickly put his hand over his mouth and escaped back to his apartment and finally felt, uh, felt sort of normal again. So anyway, um, that was fun to include in, in the anchor of whatever it was a year and a half ago. I can't, I can't remember. So um, uh, anyway. Yes, thank you so much, Bill. That's wonderful. And um, I'm sure I speak for everybody. The anchor is a publication that brings together photography and writing. It is, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's sharing of our. Um, resident life. In this picture here, you're seeing somebody sharing a recipe from their family as well as someone who's talking about what they've learned at the Admiral as a painter. Um, but the anchor, everybody very much looks forward to the next edition of the anchor and learning about fellow residents and also just seeing what's happening within the community. These next slides are a few um, more pictures of things that were featured. Um, yeah, it's more, it's not just writing, it's pictures, as Katie is saying, yeah. a lot of, we have a lot of photographers here. So, so now we're going to turn to, to Mindy. No, you're not, it's your turn. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so thank you, Bill, for talking about writing. We also have a published writer with us today. We'll turn it over to Mindy, who is very much active in writing and an active member of our community. If you'd introduce yourself and say a little bit about what you enjoy about creativity in the arts of the Admiral. Well, <laughs> I have written nonsense verse all my life as a child and as a young adult until I got married. And for the 48 years I was married, I never wrote a thing. I was too busy. I had four kids and an antique shop and a husband whose work uh, involved my, I helped sell his work. And when I moved here as a widow, I started writing again, both memoirs with Bill in the memoir class, which is wonderful, and then limericks. And I've gotten, so I write a limerick every single day. And some of them are good, and some of them are lousy, you know, but Anyway, um, I, I just suddenly one day had a thing about skiddly diddly scat. It sounded like something little kids would love to say. And so I, I made this story about a mouse and a cat that live in a laundromat and they get mixed up in a washing machine and they wind up with their tails mixed up and their voices mixed up, and they and they have to and they have to figure out how to get un, unhitched, so to speak, <laughs> back to, to normal. And um, even though we have a lot of artists here, I found a professional illustrator. And what I want to say mostly about this is the support that I got from the admiral. On the, on the night of the book launch, one of the uh, engineers had made a, a whole video. And I sat here and I read it, turning the pages mechanically. And I sold 60 copies that night. <laughs> and over the next three months, I sold out of 300 copies, which I had privately published. And a great percentage of them were to Admiral people who, I cannot tell you how supportive people are here. If you do something and they like it, boy, they will back you. They will get their friends to back you. They, it's, it's just been absolutely marvelous. And um, I don't know if I'll ever do anything else as far as you know, pro professionally and um, for profit, so to speak. But um, if, if you have a thing, you know,
know, if you have a skill or a talent or a desire, you can really make something of it living here. I recommend it. <laughs> Thank you, Benny. That's one. Really appreciate your comments. One of the things when we were putting together our panelists and our agenda, we were talking a lot about what's happening here within the Admiral for arts and creativity, but our residents are very much out and about in the community, Chicago, downtown, the museums. So, and that's very much part of our life here too. So we wanted to include that as part of the panelists and to touch on being out and about in the community, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce Sandy and she's gonna talk about not only her creativity for herself, but how she's um, practicing that throughout the Chicagoland community. Sandy, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. I'm Sandy Larson. I moved here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I moved here 10 years ago when the building opened and I moved from Florida, although most of my adult life was in Chicago, you know, working downtown. And so I knew the area and um, my husband and I lived on a boat for a while and he always called me the Admiral. So when I saw this place was named the Admiral, I thought it's meant to be. That's and by the way, my granddaughter got one of Bendy's books and was thrilled by it at age six. So um, we do have a lot of fun here and a lot of experiences, but my uh, talk is more about what I do outside the Admiral which is I'm part of the Saints organization. Do any of you, are any of you familiar with the Saints? I have my badge on, um, just so I'll remember what I am. <laughs> but, um, it, the Saints organization, the Chicago Saints, do a lot of ushering and work with uh, area theaters, uh, both downtown and also in the suburbs. And I, got into it about a year after I moved here, and there are a number of people in the building at that time who were also saints. And we can walk right out the door and catch the 147 to go downtown and usher at the symphony or one of the other venues. Um, and there are also um, different um, places really in the neighborhood here, and it's growing, it's increasing as a, arts area and is an area for different venues. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Basically, to be a saint, you go online, and by the way, I also have a tech help group here who will help you with any of your problems with your technology. Very good. But, <laughs> but also, um, I think that um, you, you uh, pay for your membership once a year, and that money actually goes to help the small theaters. So it's and it's tax deductible. Um, and as I say, there are a number of places that use the Saints, um, and we also, um, you know, I think to learn what it takes to put on a production because you're backstage or you're seeing how they're setting up or what exercises they go through before they perform. It's really been an education for me. Plus, I've met lots of nice people. So um, I highly recommend it. I'd be happy to talk to you individually about it. It's just a good program and um, one that I enjoy being part of. Thank you so much. Oh, and, and Lois reminds me, and also you get to see the production for free. <laughs> and uh, you know, as the prices sometimes at the symphony, I'm really happy to sit anywhere they tell me I can. Thank you. We oftentimes all hear people saying, I just went to this, or I was at the Lyric, or I'm going here. So there's a lot of activity within the Admiral, joining together, you know, <coughs> get, uh, grabbing a friend and going to a production. So I think that's another thing that's really, I forgot to tell them about the 147. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bindi and I went to a play a few weeks ago and uh, at the Goodman. And when we got back on the bus on Michigan Avenue, the wonderful 147, there were three or four Admiral people already on the bus. They'd been to something at the auditorium. So we all shared and exchanged information on our different places and uh, came, out, came home to the Admiral. Great. So I also, so now we're going to
going to transition um, to, I recall, an eclectic amount of things that happened at the Admiral. And Lois is going to talk a number of, uh, on a number of topics of things that she has started and participated in, which I think is also the beauty of a community like the Admiral. If you have an interest, maybe it exists and you can participate, or maybe it doesn't exist and you create it on your own. So Lois, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. And I'm Lois Hobart. Uh, my husband and I moved in within the first month that the Admiral was open back in August of 2012. Um, I'm still the youngest person here, but it's tough being a trophy wife. <laughs> 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 um, when we came here, the building was just finished, but it really wasn't finished. This room was just raw concrete. There were some electrical four boxes around, but these pillars, that was it. No stage. Uh, there was a hole in the ground where the swimming pool is. The movie theater didn't exist. Um, there wasn't a lot going on except the staff working very hard to try to find things to keep us busy. And I said, I don't want to live in a place that's going to have bingo every day at 3 o'clock. <laughs> so I started the program committee. And we started bringing in entertainers to do concerts. Um, Sandy was on that committee and started up a group that was doing game playing. I don't think you do bingo, do you? They do bingo over in the harbors. But they have, they have a, a, we have a full schedule of games that are played in our beautiful solarium. Um, programs got so popular here that um, Sandy also started an ushering group for this room because there were so many people coming in with walkers that it was seriously getting to be a fire hazard here. Mm -hmm. So anyone who has a walker has a name tag on their walker with their picture on it. You come in and you are you pick whatever, wherever you want to sit. Your walker's taken, put in the closet. It's out of everybody's way till the end. It's it's really quite. Um, Sophisticated, thank you. And it's, um, everyone's the same. Everyone's the same in the audience. Um, but what do we do in this room? Well, Helen told you we have the chorus. We have presentations like this. We have concerts from various um, groups. We have the Chen family, which is Robert Chen, who's the concert master of Chicago Symphony Orchestra. He, his wife, who's also a violinist, his daughter, who plays viola, and his son, who's a cellist, have come here many times. We just love them. Um, we've had parties for them after a concert. Um, other individuals or ensembles come. Um, and one of the things I started, because I come from a theater background, is started a reader's theater, which is, uh, we haven't been able to do it in a long time because of the pandemic, but reader's theater is when people work with their scripts you don't have to memorize anything, which is great, as long as you can still read, and somebody who might be really good, I'd be willing to get them a script in Braille if it was needed ever. Um, but they stand or sit with a music stand, and they act out the play without moving. So it's actually a great way for somebody, you don't even have to look at them. You can pretend you're sleeping, or be sleeping, and sit here and listen to a great play, and we might have a narrator, we might have some sound effects, uh, we staged um, the Gin Game, that wonderful uh, piece. We actually did it in our movie theater initially because this room wasn't finished yet. And we did several performances of it and we have restaged it two or three times. Um, it would have to be recast at this point with new people, but um, we've done some other pieces and I've been uh, an, a seed of an idea has been planted to create something or produce something for our 10th anniversary that's coming up uh, in the summertime. So I'm noodling on that. Um, I love the idea of Reader's Theater, again, because you don't have to move. So you can be in a wheelchair and act. Um, we have a wheelchair lift over here for the stage, so we get people up here. It's really for anyone who can read aloud and not sound terrible. It has to be really interesting, but we have a lot of interesting people here. <clears throat> An offshoot from the Reader's Theater group that started and has continued is the play reading group, 
which means monthly or twice a month. Uh, and another gentleman is in charge of that. He picks a play and through email announces what it's going to be. You respond and say, I'll be there, I would like to read, or I'll be there, I just want to listen, and there's a big room, and then people take turns reading the scripts. And it, I've always told them, if something is really good, let me know and we'll put it into the reader's theater piece. But otherwise, I think people just have a good time reading a play out loud together, and then they usually break off and go to dinner together afterwards, too. That's great. So, we're an extremely social group. <laughs> Thank you so much. So from the presentation, from the different panelists, you've heard of the large breadth of all the activities that are happening. And I feel like there's still some in my mind that, oh, we could talk about this or we could talk about this. But I do want to allow for a few questions. Um, I had a few questions posed to me, but I also want to allow time from the audience. Um, is there anybody who has any questions for any of the panelists? Glenn? We'll bring the mic over to you. Activities are there? Can you go at any time? So we have a full fitness area that does include a swimming pool and hot tub. We have full uh, studio space where you can go and do your own exercises. We have a full cardio room with full weights and different um, cardio machines. And then we also have an uh, aerobic studio. Both our studio um, as well as our swimming pool has set scheduled activities for groups. And so you can kind of pick which time works best for you or which class works best for you. But Katie, our Kavanaugh, our fitness director, has done a wonderful job. And I, I think there's quite a few people here on the panel that participate in um, the activities. So is there someone here? Who, so Lois, would you like to? I will speak to two water aerobics classes every week, Monday and Wednesday mornings that are really fun. Otherwise, the pool is open at any time for anybody to go and swim 24 hours a day. And Katie talked about the schedule of fitness classes. Not only can you go down to the room, and there is a limit on how many bodies can be in either the fitness room or the pool, but the fitness classes you can also watch on our closed circuit television channel and do them in your apartment. And I'm going to take that question and also pose it to our art group about the arts rooms and different, you know, how do you, how people access the different There's spaces. There's a great thing about the art room. We, we staged a, uh, an event to get the building to allow us to have 24-7 access. It had been closed, I think locked in the, in the evening. Now it's open 24-7. So you can go anytime. We have lockers down there so you can keep art supplies in the closet, and it's, it's open whenever you want to come. We also have a full complement of supplies available for everybody. And then I would also ask the panelists if anybody is a gardener or wants to talk at all about the gardening spaces that are available for people to use. I'm, one thing about um, the art that Jan didn't mention is a wood sculptor. We have a wood shop back in the hidden recesses of the building. Back it's got the back of the all house. kinds of things that can cut your fingers off, <laughs> um, and, and it's available. I don't know what the schedule is for that. But, um, as far as gardening, we have an amazing gardener sitting over here in the blue shirt, and she and her husband and a newcomer are kind of take over the, our first floor garden out here, which is stunning. And I say that because I live in a garden apartment and I love looking at my garden. Thank you, Kathy. But on our 10th floor, there's a terrace there and there are 15 plots of raised beds, um, maybe five by eight foot. 
that you can get permission annually and you can even share it uh, and you can plant whatever you want up there. So. Oh, and we have a very, very, very active gardening committee that puts fresh flowers around the dining room that they get, they plant things, uh, and then there's a plant sale a couple of times a year. So. Bees. Pardon me? Bees. Oh, and the beehives, <laughs> if I may. We have, on our 13th floor roof, we have a beehive, and two, 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 two hives. It's a, it's a little bit of an uh, introduction to April's marketing event where we're going to be doing gardening and open spaces. So we'll talk more about our gardens and opening spaces, but I think that's an important part of creativity as well. A lot of people create with um, flowers and with their hands and with the soil. So I wanted to make sure we were also talking about gardening as we talk about art and creativity. Um, that was, uh, thank you for that question. Are there any, are, would anybody else like to ask a question? Katie. Yes. Katie, um, for those of you who are politically involved, we have a postcard writing group every Tuesday, and we, we take the issues of the day that most concern most of us, and we write our senators and representatives and the president and the, anybody that we want to. And, um, you know, we're, it, as, as somebody said early on, we're a resident-generated group, so you don't have to wait for somebody to come in. You can say, I would like to do this, and chances are, if you can get people to do it with you, you got a committee. And uh, Jan also had a response to that. Yeah, um, one thing else we haven't mentioned is we have uh, pop-up programs. So if anyone uh, feels inclined uh, to have a program on their own, last night there was one a woman talked about her father and grandfather uh, as undercover spies. So if you have an idea, you can, you can even have an event on your own. So I want to take this moment to thank our